this has gone from being a forest for we think probably many thousands of years upon our supine forest to shrubs. Ecologist Craig Allen has spent his professional life studying the Ponderosa pine forests of New Mexico's Jemez Mountains. He's watched huge wildfires hammer these forests over and over since the 1990s. Every year the fires get bigger. But a century ago, forests looked like this. These days, if they're not burned out, they're overgrown, choked, strangled. This is not a healthy forest. What happened? Thomas Swetnam collects the history of forests in his lab, thousands of sections cut from ponderosa pine trees. These tree rings show centuries of regular fires, small fires that kept forest growth in check, and then the fires stopped. Now the fire behaviors are just off the charts. I mean, they're, they're extraordinary. Actually, I think in some cases, their fire behavior that probably these forests haven't seen in millennia or maybe even tens of thousands of years. Part of the reason was the early forest service. Their motto was no fires. The nation's forests were a resource and fire was the enemy. For a hundred years, and we've been very good at suppressing them. And now we're, we're reaping that fiery maelstrom. We have fires now we can't stop, and they're going to continue to burn until the landscape is so scarred and so broken up that there isn't going to be a whole lot left to burn. Small fires used to clear out the undergrowth and brush and small trees. Without them, the undergrowth piled up, grew thick like tinder, fueling a new era of megafires. Wildfires now come up off the ground and climb into the crowns of the big ponderosa pines. It kills them. It's almost impossible to stop these megafires once they get going. Even without climate change in the mix, this is probably not coming back as the forests and woodlands that they were before. It's hard to argue that, we've, that we didn't fail. But people like Wally Covington at Northern Arizona University and his team of researchers are trying to figure out what will survive a megafire. They had thinned this plot years ago, but a crown fire came through. It was too ferocious to be stopped. You know, in my opinion, we need to get as much done as we can in a hurry because fire and crown fire is going to come through these lands faster than we think. You know, this is huge. The U.S. Forest Service is also trying to figure out how much they need to trim, how much tinder they need to remove to defuse the green time bomb. But there are millions of acres to treat and little time or money. They're a plague. On this forest, it's averaging about 900 trees per acre. Historically, it was probably about 40. Here in the National Forest, what we're facing is a tree epidemic. Armstrong wants more prescribed fires, but that's a problem. People now live close to forests, or in them. They complain about the smoke. They fear the fires will get loose and burn down their homes. Armstrong says people can't have it both ways, though. You can't banish fire and still have big forests. If you want forests and you want those benefits that you derive from forests, then by God, you better start accepting fire as an integral part out here. 